Now that NVIDIA's RTX 40 Super Series graphics cards have officially been announced, I wanted to discuss the impact this release will have on the GPU market. After a year of products that didn't quite offer anything spectacular when it came to performance per dollar, I think we're going to start seeing deals which will look compelling to people in this market. This will also have some impacts on NVIDIA's own models which are available today, which could be beneficial to the consumer. However, what won't be pretty is the bloodbath that AMD will find themselves in and if those will prompt a response. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. It's been about a week since Nvidia announced their RTX 40 Super Series at CES that will be hitting store shelves over the next coming weeks. I'm sure at this point the vast majority of you are quite well versed with what had been announced at CES 2024. We'll go through some of the details here quickly, not going to spend a whole lot of time going through specs as we had been discussing so much of that already on the channel these past couple of months with all the rumors and leaks. Nvidia announced three models. The RTX 4080 Super at $999, which will replace the RTX 4080, which was going for $1199. The RTX 4070 Ti Super at $799, which will be replacing the RTX 4070 Ti. And then finally, the RTX 4070 Super at $599. However, in this case, the RTX 4070 is not going to be discontinued, but rather it has gotten an official price cut to $549. And if it wasn't obvious to you, I'll point out that this is basically an upselling tactic that we have seen before. For. They would rather you just spend the extra $50 and get the 4070 Super, and we'll discuss later on in the video why that actually makes sense. This would actually be a good segue into specifications. I like using video cards chart here because Nvidia makes it more difficult on their site to get more direct comparisons, and they also aren't a very upfront about shaders and would rather have you focus on RT flops. Also, one other important spec I wanted to point out is that initially it was reported that the RTX 4070 Super was going to get 36 megabytes similar to the original 4070 and this was also stated on Nvidia's official review guide. However, they had recently corrected the L2 cache mount for the 4070 Super and it's now listed with 48 megabytes of L2 cache so that makes it much closer to the original RTX 4070 Ti. And going back to the chart, basically from what we had gathered here, the 4070 Super will be performing closely to the 4070 Ti, the RTX 4070 Ti Super will perform closely to the RTX 40 4080, and the RTX 4080 Super will just be marginally better than the RTX 4080 non-Super. Which is why I think they did the price drop on the 4080 Super from 1200 bucks because there would have just been no way to really justify it. I mean, the original 4080, in my opinion, was also overpriced, but this wouldn't have made any sense at all because it's a minuscule jump, so they had to drop the price there to compensate. So in a way, it makes it a little bit better. Moving on, we'll come back to the RTX 40 Super Series, but I wanted to shift our focus to what's happening currently in the market and what kind of impact you can expect once these new cards are available to buy from retailers. Since we know that the RTX 4080 and 4070 Ti have been discontinued, you're obviously not going to see stores carry much stock going forward. Basically what you see now is probably the last batch, as from what I had heard they had stopped production of these GPUs back in like November. Along with that, you should most likely see some price drops for these discontinued cards because now that we have these updated models with one being cheaper than the other, it makes no sense to pay these prices. If we go to Newegg.com, sort by sold and shipped by Newegg, and toggle what's in stock for the 4080s, you'll see that there is actually not much left, just some cards by MSI. At these prices though, it just makes no sense to buy because you can just wait and try to snag one of the 4080 Super models at MSRP, which will be slightly faster for less money. Now to be fair, the 40 Super Series were just recently announced, so I presume prices will be updated over the next coming weeks so they can eventually get rid of stock, otherwise they're just going to be sitting on store shelves. The regular 4080 should be no more than $900, maybe $930 tops if it's one of those premium models. And I think maybe, you know, if you can stretch it to 900 bucks, it could offer a little bit better value than the 4070 Ti Super. The same can also be said for the 4070 Ti non-Super. However, I can see there's already some models with coupon codes that are considerably below MSRP. But given the specs and early performance numbers we've seen of the 4070 Super, I'd pay no more than 650 for a 4070 Ti at this point. Again,
again, it just comes down to the fact that you can pay a bit more and get yourself a card which will be performing a whole tier higher, or you can save a bunch of money and get something that, you know, will be on the heels of this original model. It's a no-brainer. I just wanted to give you guys a rundown of this pricing and what your expectations should be going forward for these discontinued models, so that way you don't end up making an uninformed decision or you don't get ripped off. And if you have someone you know, a friend or family member that is in the market for a GPU and wants to make an informed decision, definitely share this video with them. As for the 4070, here the situation of course becomes more interesting because I mentioned earlier Nvidia isn't discontinuing this model, but instead they have officially done a price cut for it at $550, and we can definitely see there's a variety of models available to purchase at this price, maybe a little bit lower. This may look appealing to some of you, but in terms of performance per dollar, the 4070 Super will actually be the better buy. There were some leaked benchmarks of the 4070 Super from 3 d Mark Suite, and video cards posted the results of it along with the 4070 Ti and 4070 on their site in this chart. You'll notice that the 4070 Super sits in between the cards, but it is performing closer to the 4070 Ti. So on average, you're going to be looking at a 20% uplift, given the price difference between them is around 10%. It just makes more sense to get the 4070 Super. And if you're into overclocking a GPU, which really isn't that hard, it's like one of the easiest components you can OC, then you should be able to close that gap and have it perform just like a stock 4070 Ti. Hence, the new adjusted price for the 4070 Ti should be no more than 650 in my opinion. Now, moving on to AMD, and I'll be blunt with you guys, I just don't see many reasons to consider buying AMD in these segments, if at all. AMD is going to have to accept the fact that in order for them to move RDNA 3 given this current market, they will have to drop prices and accept lower margins or just barely break even. In order for AMD to sell their competing products, they have to have significantly better value proposition compared to Nvidia. It's just the way it is, given how strong their mindshare is, and that's just something AMD fanboys for some reason don't want to accept. The 7900 XTX did look somewhat decent next to a 4080 because it was $200 cheaper, so a gamer in this segment found themselves in this predicament where raster performance is about the same, but when it comes to software features, it's not as good as Nvidia. Now granted, AMD is getting better, but Nvidia is still quite ahead, and they just keep innovating and bringing out new features that, you know, they have a really good way of presenting, so credit to their marketing department for that. And for many, they'll happily pay the Nvidia premium just to get access to those better features, better ray tracing, better path tracing, etc. However, since the RTX 4080 Super is the same price, that value proposition is completely gone. There will be no point in buying the 7900 XTX if they're the same price. It's an inferior product, it's just simple as that. AMD will need to drop the 7900 XTX TX to $900, but I would say $850 is the better price point. Right now, the 7900 XTX isn't anywhere close to that price, so it's not something I'm recommending. The same can also be said about the 7900 XT, even if it was slightly faster than the 4070 Ti, it didn't matter, the 4070 Ti absolutely stomped it when it comes to the sales data out there. And given the fact that the 4070 Ti Super is considered a quote-unquote cheaper 4080 by many, that alone is going to make the situation worse for AMD. And even if the 7900 XT is dropped to say $699, I still see many people arguing the fact that, you know, you can get a regular 4070 Ti on clearance, or they'll go, I'll save the money and buy a 4070 Super. The argument I can see for the 7900 XT is that you get a card with, you know, 20 gigabytes of VRAM, a 320 bit bus, as opposed to 12 gigabytes and a 192 bit. But for the reasons I mentioned earlier, that alone isn't enough, and it would have to be significantly cheaper than its Nvidia counterpart for people to consider it a viable option. Just like the 7900 XTX, there's no price movement yet. And you can argue how it's already going for less than $150 compared to its original MSRP, but keep in mind that was grossly inflated to upsell people to the XTX. As for the 7800 XT, this card simply needs to come down another $100. I already thought at $500 it was overpriced considering you could get 6800 XTs and 3080s for cheaper, and they perform the same, and now given the 4070 Super is in the same price bracket, and it's going to be performing a whole tier higher, it just doesn't make sense to go for the 7800 XT anymore. Let's circle back to the RTX 40 Super Series. I personally think that the 4070 Super will be the most popular card amongst the three given the feedback I've gotten. However, I have seen audiences of other YouTubers say they think that the 4070 Ti Super is the best choice, and I can see where they are coming from. I saw a community poll from Erock, and most of his audience said they prefer the 4070 Ti Super. Vex did a video recently discussing the new series, and I saw his audience mention the same thing. I think the reasoning for this is simply because this is the high-end GPU most consumers 
consumers in the segment were waiting for. If it performs relatively close to a 4080, then I can see a lot of previous 80 class owners buying this card. The 80 class traditionally expensive, but not exorbitantly priced like the flagship, and it's been a very popular segment. I think a lot of people were expecting this kind of performance at $800 from the get-go, but then we saw Nvidia balloon the 4080 to $1,200, and that deterred a lot of buyers who said they weren't going to just keep their current card. Now that they have their chance to get 4080-like performance, at $800, they're going to hop on it. As for the 4080 Super, contrary to most of the opinions out there of people saying it's not going to be popular, I on the other hand believe it's going to do well and the simple reason for that is because it's very difficult to buy an RTX 4090 and if you can find it in stock, it's nowhere close to MSRP. So what I think is going to happen is you'll see a lot of people who were originally interested in getting a 4090 end up settling for this card instead. The 4080 is around 30% slower than the 4090, given the 4080 Super will be around 5-8% to faster out of the box than with over overclocking, you can probably close that gap down to 15%, you know, being generous here, then I think value-wise, it's a no-brainer. Prior to the whole AI craze taking over the GPU market, it actually made more sense to ignore the 4080 at $1,200 and just get the 4090 at $1,600. But now that we're talking about a whole $1,000 difference, yeah, that's quite significant. As for the 4070 Super, I personally think this will be the most popular card, simply because it's the cheapest out of the three, and given the fact that most PC gamers are still gaming at 1080p and 1440p, with few on 4K, then the performance of the 4070 Super will be all that they need. Along with the rising acceptance of using upscaling and frame generation, I think this card will serve most users just fine. I know some of you might be wondering, do I wait for the RTX 50 series at this point? Well, only you can answer that question for yourself. If you've got something now that you can bide your time with, if you're willing to compromise on settings, then might be better just to hold off. If you're in need of a new GPU now, then I say there's no harm. As long as you're happy, that's all that matters at the end. I I would say given the rumors surrounding Blackwell, we're probably a year or so away, so you decide if that's too long or if you can wait it out. So you guys let me know, if you're going to be buying one of these cards, how do you think this series will impact the market? As for now, that'll do it for this one, we'll touch base in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.